Rival clans and competing interests of neighboring nations are threatening its fragile process. President Hassan Eshe Mahmoud has reiterated that Somalia has one federal government. The worst flashpoint is the far southern region dubbed Jubaland, bordering Kenya and Ethiopia. Now, both nations have troops there after an invasion in 2011. Now, while this month several rival warlords declared themselves president, sparking anger in Mogadishu. The effective self-appointed appointment of Ahmed Madobe risks opening a rift between Nairobi and Mogadishu. Jubaland, which includes the key port of Kismayu, has a lucrative charcoal industry, fertile farmland, as well as offshore oil and gas deposits. Well, let's hear more on this situation. We are joined by Abdi Ainte, the Executive Director of the Heritage Institute of Policy Studies in Mogadishu. He's joining us live. Mr. Abdi, thank you very much. Is it correct to say, though, that the breakaway regions are a threat to Somalia's newfound stability? I mean, I don't think I would call them breakaway regions. Not all of them are breakaways except Somaliland. But in the case of, for example, Jubaland in Kismayo, um, I think they, um, states like that do definitely uh, form some kind of a challenge to the central government. Uh, but I don't think it's an instability issue. In the longer term, it could be an instability issue. But in the interim, it is a political um, schism between the center and the periphery, if you will. And that has been going on for some time. But now that more uh, territory is being uh, recovered from al-Shabaab, I think uh, we're going to see more and more of this. All right. Abdi, why are the semi-autonomous states, though, insisting on forming their individual governments? Well, I mean, I think the, the, um, the grievances are mostly uh, emanating from the previous dictatorship in Somalia uh, 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 before 1991. We had an overly centralized state in Somalia that concentrated power virtually in Mogadishu. And so many communities outside of Mogadishu felt that they had no say in what's going on in the capital. So now I think what we're seeing is, uh, you know, a, a grievance that is emanating from that kind of a feeling and, and an effort by these communities to create um, autonomous regions. Now the problem is that the central government in Mogadishu also fears that some of these regions are eventually going to be kind of run away, not break away, but run away, essentially running their affairs um, as they do without any role for the federal government. We have an example of that in Puntaland right now in northeast Somalia. Looking at the situation, though, Abdi, of, uh, you know, a region like Jubaland, is it likely that this situation may be a stumbling block to relations with neighboring governments? Uh, we are talking here about Kenya and Ethiopia. Well, uh, certainly uh, relations between, if you, uh, between Kenya and, and the Somali government here in Mogadishu has been strained uh, over the last few weeks on the issue or over the issue of Jubaland and, and Kismayo. The fact is that Kenya has been trying to create a buffer zone to protect its vital interest is the Lamu project, a $23 billion project that Kenya is now involved with Ethiopia as well as with South Sudan. Um, and, uh, um, of course, the tourist industry, Kenya has been trying to protect this and create a buffer zone, sort of a strategic space in its uh, border with Somalia. And that has not been sitting well with the federal government in Mogadishu, which felt that Kenya is encroaching upon its sovereignty by essentially creating client states within its own territories. And um, with respect to Ethiopia, it's less um, of a big problem at the moment. Uh, but I think we can expect in the, in the next few weeks also Ethiopia playing a much more prominent role. The, the difference between Ethiopia and Kenya when it comes to Somalia is that Ethiopia is very much, has a long and treacherous experience in Somalia. Kenya is sort of a newcomer, if you will, and that's why we're seeing now strained relationships between Nairobi and Mogadishu. All right, uh, Abdi Ainti joining us there from Mogadishu. Thank you for your insights on that uh, situation.